Thank you. Thanks for having me. So as Ivan said, uh, I tend to spend a lot of time on working on Java EE and now Jakarta EE, but today I'm going to discuss something else, which I'll tend to also spend more and more time on, and that is FN project. So my name is David Delabasse. You can find me on Twitter at Delabasse. I work at Oracle. Um, I do report to HQ in California, but technically I'm based in Belgium, where I live. So before we start, I thought that, and given that we're just after lunch, it might be useful to give you some fact about Belgium, because it's not a very large country. So in terms of population, Belgium is just bigger than uh, Bulgaria. I think we have like 3 million more inhabitants than Bulgaria, but it's uh, four times smaller. So it's a very small co country. Having said that, in Belgium, we do have uh, something which is quite special, and that's the food. So the first thing that we have in Belgium in terms of food, Belgian beers. So uh, we have over 1,600 different types of beer. And in fact, the Belgian beers, beers have been put uh, in the UNESCO cultural heritage list. So, so it shows you that it's really a thing. Next to that, we have the Belgian chocolate. We produce around 22 kilograms of chocolates per inhabitant uh, per year. So that's quite a lot. And it's clearly the best chocolate in the world. And then we have the French fries. And, well, just check the Wikipedia page for fries, and there is a whole section that basically uh, discusses that issue of the French fries. So clearly there is an ongoing battle between French and Belgium about the ownership of fries. But if you, look that, if you read that uh, Wikipedia page, it, it is clearly explained that French fries are in, coming from Belgium and not from France. So uh, this is something that we do have to. And finally, Brussels sprout. Anybody enjoy Belgian sprout? Yes. Well, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have my own theory about those, and I'm pretty sure that they are not coming from Brussels nor from Belgium, but they are in, in fact coming from France. <laughs> anyway, let's discuss about Project FN, an open source container native fast platform. So before I show you how FN works, I'd like to set the stage and give you some background on what we're talking about. So we're talking about FAS, Functional as a Services. So uh, in a FAS platform, at the heart of a FAS platform, we have the notion of a fun function. So it's really the core of any FAS platform. A function is basically a small piece of code that has a very well-defined job. Uh, it's not a function as we do have in mathematics in the sense that a function most of the time will get an input, most of the time it will produce an output, but sometimes it can also have a side effect. Um, given that the function has a very well-defined job, well, it's, it's, it's very easy to develop, understand, and maintain. Now, then we have this as-a-service uh, thing. So that the, the as-a-service thing is basically the compute element on which your function will run. Uh, in most of the cases, it's something that you don't have to take care of because somebody else will manage that uh, for you. And the fact that the, f the, 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 the platform itself is managed by someone else provides a lot of benefits. So why would you want to go towards a fast model? Well, first of all, given that you just have to focus on writing your function, you don't have to worry about anything else, at the end of the day, it should be easier to write your code. Your function will basically uh, do what you want to achieve, and you, don't, you will not have to deal with any of the underlying technical aspects, such as, such as scaling, uh, availability, maintaining the platform, and so on, and so on. And given that you don't have to manage that, it's someone, someone else's responsibility, it should be a lot easier to uh, tackle things such as scaling, availability, security, and so on. It's basically not your job, it's someone else's job. It should, be, it should also be faster, given that you are focusing on writing your function. Well, you just focus on that, so you don't have to worry about any, uh, uh, something else. So at the end of the day, your development life cycle, life cycle will be a lot uh, faster. It will be improved. And last but not least, FAST and serverless in general has also a very strong uh, economic, economic angle. Given that we, are, we have very well-defined uh, function, um, it basically gives the ability to the FAST platform provider to do very smart billings. So 
a fast platform provider can basically do billing in a very small increments, like 10 milliseconds or hundreds of milliseconds. And the idea is that you will, not, you will only be charged when your functions are running. So if your function doesn't run, you don't pay a dim. That's also one of the key benefits of fast, that economical angle. So some time ago at Oracle, we started to work on a fast platform. So we, at that time, we asked ourselves, um, well, what do we want to achieve? What should the ideal fast platform uh, tackle in terms of capability? What should it offer? So the first thing is that we think that uh, a fast platform should be open source. One of the reasons why it should be open source, we are rel relatively late in the game, so if we want to make sure that we gain traction, we need to make sure that it can be used by anybody. So that open source aspect is very key. And something else that we also uh, wanted to solve is the vendor locking. You will see that when we're using FN, there's no vendor locking. So if you're using FN, you're not tied to any vendor. You are not tied to Oracle. Something else that we wanted to, to tackle is the ease of use. So you will see that basically to get started on FN, it's very easy. Uh, it's something that you can uh, easily do. So that doesn't preclude you Preclude you, from, pre, sorry, preclude you from doing advanced things. But the thing is that if you want to get started, it should be very easy, and we don't want to do any kind of magic. So if you want to get your hand dirty and see what's going on behind, uh, behind the scene, that's something that is perfectly possible. Um, another thing that we wanted to, to tackle is, uh, with uh, our fast platform is that we wanted to have a Docker container as, as a first-class citizen. So you will see that, basically, we are leveraging uh, Docker in and out uh, in FN. Now, it's not something that you, don't that you do necessarily need to know. You will see that under the hood, we are using Docker, but uh, we are providing all the abstraction to make sure that you can get up and running without knowing how Docker runs. So something that we we said ourselves when we started is that in terms of scheduler, we don't want to have FN tied to any particular scheduler. At Oracle, obviously, we like Kubernetes a lot. The market in general likes Kubernetes a lot. So we are working with Kubernetes, but you can take FN and deploy it on any kind of scheduler that is out there, like uh, Apache Mesos, for example. It's something that uh, is perfectly uh, and easily doable. Now, one of the things also that we said ourselves when we started is that uh, we want FN to be very much developer-focused. So we think that uh, if we want to get traction, we need to make sure that we talk to the developers. So when we're talking to our developers, we want to provide him, the developers the tool that he is already using. So if you are a Java developer, you will write your function in Java. But if you happen to be a Kotlin developer, you can write your function using Kotlin. Off, or if you are a Go developer, you will use Go, and so on and so on. So we just want to provide you the tools that you are already using. We don't want to enforce you any new tools. And last but not least, we, when we started, we also thought that um, our fast platform should be platform independent. So we don't want to, any, to have any vendor locking, but uh, we also want to make sure that, well, you can take the platform and run it anywhere uh, in the cloud, obviously. Um, on-premises, so if you are doing that, that basically means that you will take uh, the open source bits of FN and you will run it on your own server. server. That's something that is perfectly possible. Of course, if you are doing that, that, will, that means that you will have to manage those servers, so you will lose one of the benefits of a fast uh, platform. You, someone, else, someone in your company will have to manage the server, but if you understand that, it's not an issue. You can also take FN and run it on your laptop. That's something that is very convenient for developing, for doing demo, for doing session, and so on. That's what I'm doing here. I have FN running on my laptop. And the key thing here is that it's not a simulation of what we are using in the cloud. It's really the same bits. It's not something different. So that's a key aspect that we wanted to have in our fast platform. So all those requirements basically led to uh, FN, an open source container native fast platform. So I will now go over some details about FN. So the first thing that we have to discuss is FN function. So I told you most of the time a function gets some input, it, it produces an output, and sometimes it, ha it has some side effect. 
in FN functions happens to be a Docker container. So we basically take your function, so the code of your function, and we wrap it uh, into a container. We do that for you. It's not something that you have to do. So the function gets its input via STD in, it produces its output via STD out, and if something goes wrong, it can use STD error to uh, log that error. So let's look at that in action. So by the way, the, the timer doesn't work here. Uh, so, I will create a very simple Go function. So let me zoom that. So this is the most basic function that you can imagine. It's a very simple uh, hello world. Hello, uh, J prime. You see that there's nothing specific in my code uh, about FN. So now I will use one of the tools that is provided by FN, and it's called uh, the CLI, and I will do FN in it. So you see, it has found the Go function. So, oops, sorry. It has found a Go function, so it assumed that we are going to use a Go runtime. It makes sense. So if we look, we have our Go, Go function, and basically one file has been created, a YAML file. This YAML file contains just some metadata about my function. So the name of the function, the version of the function, uh, the runtime that we want to use, and so on and so on. Now we can run the function. For that, I will use, uh, again, the CLI, but I will add a, So I will do fn run to basically run the function. And you see that what we are doing here, we are basically taking the code of the function and we wrap it into a Docker container. And what we do at the end, we run that function. So that's basically uh, how it works. Uh, let's see. I can also do fn init. Now, this time, I will specify that I want to use the go run time and that I want to call that, fu that function, let's say, go up. If we look at go up, we have a few more files that has been created uh, by default. So we still have a function, but this time it has been created for, for me. Basically, again, a hello world function that, get, that gets some, uh, some, JSON, some input and produce some output. We can run it. So again, given that it's a new function, it will be wrapped in a container and it will be run. And this is the result of our function. Something that we also provide out of, of the box is the ability to test functions. So if I do an FN test, my function will be tested. And my two tests are passing. So those tests are uh, based using this file, which is a simple JSON file that contains a few test scenarios. So you see, if we pass it Johnny, we expect to have hello Johnny as an output. If we don't pass it anything, we expect to have hello world as an output. Right? So this is something that is very simple to do. So let's go back to the slides. So this is basically uh, how it works. Oops, sorry. Okay. Now, I will not discuss in detail about the architecture, but there are two key elements that you need to be aware. We have what we call FN server, so that's basically the, where your function will be run. Obviously, um, you'd better have more than once. I mean, in terms of, of scaling and uh, availability, that's something that is required. If you have more than one server, you need to have a load balancer, a specific FN load balancer that will do intelligent routing uh, between the different FN servers that you have. So the idea is that, for example, if you have a request coming in and you have one of your FN servers that has already have a container running to serve that request, it would make sense to route the request directly to that container just to save time. 
Obviously, if you are going to use FN on the managed services, something that Oracle will do at some point in time, we will have an offering based on FN, then you don't have to worry about that. The only thing that you need to know is where your FN platform uh, is running. That's all you, you need to do. As a developer, you will use the CLI most of the time. So the CLI is basically a tool that we're giving to help you to create function, to run function, but also to deploy function, to test function, and so on and so on. And then we're also providing FDKs, Function Development Kits, for multiple languages. Um, and we'll see that the Java FDKs uh, has something which is called FNflow that I will uh, discuss. So given it's a Java conference, let's look at what we can do on, on the Java side. So FN init, this time I'm going to use the Java runtime. Out of the box, it's uh, Java 8, uh, sorry, Java 9, but I can specify that I want to use Java 8 if I want. And I will give my function a name, Duke. So if we look at what has been created there, well, we have one class, so it's basically a hello world uh, function class. Uh, we also have a hello function test. It's basically a GUnit harness test that we can use to, to that we can use to test the function. So if I now, or sorry, something that I should also mention is that we obviously have the configuration file that contains the metadata, but we also have a pom.xml. So basically what we have created here uh, is just a Maven project. So if I do Maven test, this time I will, uh, let's see. Yep, that's, yeah, I need to go or I can do uh, MVN test. Uh, no, I need to be in there. MVN test. And it, my tests have passed it, have passed. So this is again the idea that we want to provide the developer what they are already, the tools that they're already using. So if you're a Java developer, chances are high that you are using uh, Maven. Uh, given it's a Java project, I can obviously uh, open it in my uh, IDE. So. so if we look at the source of the function, this is my, my function. So you see that it's basically a simple class with one method. In this case, the method gets an input string and it produces an output a string. So there's no interface, there's nothing specific to, to FN here. Obviously, I can run this function. It will be built using Maven, and this is the, the result. I can pass it some, I can pipe it some uh, information, and you see that uh, it's hello David there. So that works. Um, let's see. So given that it's a Java project, we can obviously uh, tweak and use the Maven file to add, for example, dependency. Uh, I will use that one. Oops. So I've added uh, Joda money, and if that works, obviously I need to save. Oops, where is it? My bum. I need to import the change. And this time I can use a Joda money. M equal big money of Euro. Oops. You won. So again, there's nothing specific to FN here. And I, if I run my function again, if I run my function again, I have an error, and I'm pretty sure that the error. Anyone has a guess? The tests are failing, so I can fix my test. <laughs> I, I, 
I did I did that once and in a con in a session, and the guy thought that I was serious about that. So let's do that properly. Uh, let's see properties. What? Uh. And you see that the tests are passing. And not only that, I'm also using uh, Jodamoni in this example. So you see that basically with uh, what we give you in terms of capability, well, you are a Java developer, so you continue to use uh, your Java tool chain. Something else that we do provide with the FDK uh, is, is this. So let's get rid of this. I will try to zoom on that a little bit because that might be... Oops. So if you look at, at this function, this function is basically getting a string in input and produce a string in output. So that's something which might not be very uh, useful. So I have an error, I don't see what's wrong. A what? And of what? Oh, yeah. no. Yep. So um, let's see. What we can do I is this. So uh, let's say that we have a person. A person. Uh, as a last name and a person as a first name, right? Uh, what we need also is a default constructor. Oops. And we also need getter and setters. So I have a very simple class which represents a person. So now what I can do, I can say, for example, that uh, this method is getting a person as an input. So here, I now can do, uh, let's say, get first. No, it's not set first, I say get first. OK. So if I run this function again, it will fail because I'm saying that my function should get a person, but I'm not passing anything. So I need to pass it a person, and I will do that by using some JSON payload. So a person has a last name and a first name. Now I can, so this is my input. I will cut that to the function invocation. And you see that my input has been used. And again, on the Java side, you see that I'm just using pure Java code. So under the hood, we are using uh, Jackson. And obviously, you have the ability to configure the uh, Jackson uh, to match the behavior that you're expecting. So, but that's something that the FDK provides, input and output coercion. Now, until now, I've just used my local Docker to test and run my function. I can obviously deploy. Uh, my function. So for that, I need to create an apps, an application which is just a grouping of function. I will call it Sophia. So I have a Sophia apps. Now I can deploy my function. So deploy, I will deploy locally to make sure that it's not pushed to a registry. Uh, so my app is Sophia, and my function is well. I'm not sure. I, I need to be. Deploy local Sophia and the function is Duke. Uh, I need to specify the app like that. And we should be good. So now if I do fn roots list Sophia, so all the roots that I have in my Sophia application, you see that my uh, function is now exposed through an HTTP endpoint. So I can reach it either by doing a curl, I can anyway reach it through the network. What I can also do, I just need to make sure that I pass it the payload. Can't, uh, what was it? No, it's in Duke. No, it's not Duke. Uh, yeah, it's Duke. So the payload, yes. Uh, oops. Can't. 
in JSON, and now I will invoke it through the network. So the application is Sophia and the function is Duke. And this is the result, but this time I'm consuming my function uh, through an HTTP endpoint. So basically I've deployed it on a FN server. So uh, we have seen GUnit test, we have seen that it's a Maven project, so we can uh, use uh, what we're using today. Uh, we have seen the output coercion, no, sorry, the input coercion, but obviously I can also say that, for example, my function would produce a person type instead in output. So this is something that is provided by the Java uh, FDK. So basically, you can keep using uh, the tool that you have been using for years if you want to develop function using Java. We also provide support for other languages, such as Go, uh, Python, JavaScript, and so on. And if, th if that's not enough, you have the ability to add your own language. That's what I did with Kotlin. So a few months ago, Kotlin wasn't supported by FN, and I added the support of Kotlin, and it's something that is pretty uh, easy to do. So you can do that for any kind of language. So FN init runtime. This time I want to use the Kotlin runtime. Oops. Sorry. So we have a function configuration file. We have a Kotlin class that has been created, and we have a JSON test file, so I can test my Kotlin function. It works. So this is my Kotlin function. This is, again, a simple hello world that expect to have some name in input. So So the, the Kotlin image is being, the container, sorry, the Kotlin Docker image is being built for this function and it's run and you see that uh, it works as expected. So you have uh, the ability to hide, to add support for the language if you want to. So let's continue. Now, at the beginning, I told you that the function have, have, a, have a very well-defined uh, job. So that basically means that they are very short-lived. They are ephemeral. So basically, a function is invoked, it performs its job, and it's gone. Function will not live for long. That also means that you shouldn't hold any state in your function. Um, that would be very expensive, and clearly, that would be inefficient. Now, there are obviously uh, a lot of case where you need to have some kind of state. If you, need, if you are, have such a, a use case, you need to hold the states outside of the function, in a services, uh, in, a, in a cache, in, in any kind of external uh, state uh, store. There's also another use case where it makes sense to have within the function some state. And that's typically when you are going to compose multiple functions together. So the idea is that, just imagine this. So you have a function that will invoke another function. Based on the result of that invocation, it will, under, it will invoke another function. And for example, that function might fail. So a different function will be invoked to cope with the error. If you are going to do that, then yes, we need to, have, uh, we need to manage the state within a, a function. And for that, we are providing FN flows. Um, it's an API that basically allows you to write those kind of hubber function that will compose multiple functions together. You will see that it's highly uh, inspired from the completable future API from Java IC8. So if you have been using the completable, the completable future uh, API of uh, IC8, uh, you will see that you can very easily switch to FN flow. The major difference here is that FN flow is distributed because we are invoking function that will high likely run on a different node, on a different FN server. That's something that is handled by the FN flow API. So right now, we have a Java FN flow. Uh, we are working on adding uh, FN flow support on Go, and over time, we'll add support for other API. So to illustrate FN flow in action, I have this uh, scenario. So it's basically a travel booking services. 
So the idea is that we want to book a trip. And when you are booking a trip, you want to make sure that you book an hotel, you book a flight, and you book a car. And at the end, given that it takes time to do all those bookings, we want to send a confirmation mail to the user. For doing that, we are using multiple backend services. So the first one, the flight booking services, is written in Java. The second one, the hotel booking services, is written in Ruby. The next one, the car rental, is written using JavaScript. And finally, the services that will send the email is written using Python. For each services, we have a booking uh, endpoint, but we also have a cancel endpoint. The idea that is that if something goes wrong, goes wrong, we want to make sure that we do cancel everything. So what we'll focus on is on this uh, trip booking function that will basically compose together those multiple invocations to book uh, a trip. So I have uh, all those functions running on my machine here. And if I look at the roots of the uh, list, travel up. Uh, I have a bunch of roots. So basically, all the roots, all, so all my functions are uh, exposed through HTTP endpoint. Uh, locally on my machine. So the one that we will focus on is the one at the bottom, the trip one, that will use the FNflow API. And it's here. So it's again a Maven project. And if we look at, uh, let's see, at the trip function, it's basically empty. So this is the function that we're going to use. And it has a cancel uh, method. So. Now I will use the, f the FNflow uh, API to basically compose the, the, the function invocation. So we have those uh, uh, flow future object. Let me zoom that a little bit so that you can see what's going on. So FNflow is basically a future object that will hold a result at some point in time of a function invocation. So if you look at the first one, we are booking a flight. So that means that at some point in time, this uh, object will be populated with the result from that function invocation or uh, an error. So we have three of those guys, uh, one to book a flight, one to book an hotel, and one to book uh, a car. And then, like we do in the completion uh, stage API, of Java IC, it's just a matter of composing the request, the function invocation. So we first invoke the flight. Once we have the result from the function, so that basically means that we're going through the network, we have the result back. Once we have the result, we pass the result to the next one, which will book in turn an hotel. Once we have the result back, we book the car. And finally, we send a confirmation mail to the user saying that, OK, we have booked your trip. So uh, let me save that and deploy this function. So fn deploy uh, local, uh, the application is travel, and the function is trip. Uh, let's see. Um, travel, yep, it's not like that. Uh, so trip, uh, fn deploy app, the application is travel. And the function, yeah, I need to make sure that's local. OK, so my function trip is deployed. To trigger it, I just need to pass it uh, some JSON payload. So I will pass some JSON payload to my function. So fn call travel trip, typing too fast. And you see that it works. That's a joke. <laughs> it's not highly visual. Luckily, we have this tool that should help us to see what's going on. So, so we see here what's going on. So we have booked a flight, we have booked an hotel, we have booked a car, and finally we have booked, uh, oh no, sorry, we have sent a mail. A uh, different view on that is this. Let me clear that. 
So we have all the services and points, so let's invoke that. So we book a car, we book a oh, sorry, we book an hotel, we book a car, we book a flight, and then we send a confirmation mail. The thing that we are so everything works. The thing that we are not dealing here is error. So if something goes wrong, well, too bad for us. So like we do with the completion stage API, we have the ability to deal with error that will be raised whenever we have a remote function uh, that fails. And it's exactly the same way. We are using this exceptionally uh, method. So the idea here is that whenever we have uh, something that, that goes wrong, we will basically uh, roll back the transaction. So if we can't book an hotel, we will cancel the hotel booking. If we can't book an hotel and a flight, we will cancel the, book, the booking of the hotel and the flight, and so on and so on. And you see that we are basically doing that using this ex exceptionally composed uh, method. So let's update that function. So deploy. OK, 251. Now let's invoke that function again. Sorry, clear. And basically, we don't see anything here because our services are uh, not failing, they are working as expected. Now, the good thing is that I have the ability to make, to force my services to fail. So now, each time, for example, I will, I will invoke the car booking services, it will fail. So uh, that will help us to see what's going on. So I will go here. Well, no, we can go here first. So let's invoke that again. So we book an hotel, we can't book a car. So that basically means that we have to cancel the hotel, we have to cancel the car, and we have to cancel the flight. And finally, we also have to send an email to the user saying that, sorry, we were not able to do the booking that you've requested. A different view on the same path. So we are trying to do the booking, and again, the car is failing. So basically, what we are doing here, uh, we, are re we are rolling we are doing a rollback of all the local transactions to make sure that uh, nothing went wrong. And at the end, we are sending a mail to the user saying, to informing that, sorry, we were, we were not able to do the booking as, as you asked. So that is one of the things that the FN Flow API allows you uh, to do, basically. You have the ability to easily compose multiple functions in one sort of Hubble function. And again, this is the, it's the idea that we want to provide the developers that the tool that they are using. So we are not providing you some kind of visual tool that allows you to define those functions. The thing that you are using today is Java and Java API. So that's why we think that it's, we have to provide those uh, in the form of an API and not in the form of a visual tool. Visual tools are very nice for demo, but as soon as it gets a little bit complex, uh, they are not uh, really useful. So let's go back to the slide. So this, this was uh, FN Flow. Right now it's uh, in Java. We already have an early implementation of, uh, we also have an early implementation of Flow for Go, and we are planning to add support for other language over time. Obviously, we also provide management and monitoring tool for uh, Project FN. So the idea is that, obviously, you want to see what's going on. If something goes wrong, you want to see uh, what, what, happened, what happened, what went wrong, those kind of things. So there are multiple ways that are provided to uh, see what is, what is happening within the platform. You can use, for example, the CLI to access the logs. So the log that might be produced by your function will be accessible through the CLI. We also provide a simple dashboard. Uh, we support open tracing, and so on, and so on. So um, something that I can quickly show you, given that we still have a few minutes. So starting uh, a container takes time, right? So obviously, we are trying to make sure that we reduce that time as much as we can. So uh, so uh, fn init runtime will create a Java function that is called start. This is a Java function that is called start. I will deploy that 
Java function to my uh, Sophia app. Sophia, and it's called start. Now we'll invoke it. So keep in mind, this time I'm going through an FN server, so I'm going through the HTTP endpoint that exposed my function. FN call uh, Sophia, and the function is uh, start. So you see, it takes 800 milliseconds. That's quite expensive. Now, if I invoke it again, it takes less than 70 milliseconds. So that's one of the optimizations that we are doing. Uh, as soon as we have a container that is started for a given function, we keep it hot for a given amount of time. So if there is a subsequent request coming from that server, uh, we will basically just reuse that container. Now, run con containers that are running is also expensive in terms of resources. So what we, what we can also do, we can pause that container, and it will uh, improve the startup time without consuming any resources at the end. Because you still, something that is key is that you don't want to be charged if your functions are, are not running. So that's something that we provide uh, in FN as well. So we have hot function, uh, they are frozen by default. We also have cold function, so that basically means that there are no uh, container ready to serve that function. We also have async function. Async function are basically fire and forget functions. So function that will be invoked whenever you have resources available on your uh, infrastructure. So we do provide a lot of additional capabilities to FN. Everything is open source, so you can go to the FN GitHub organization and check that. So for example, if you are using Kubernetes, we provide a Helm chart to easily install uh, FN on Kubernetes. We're also adding support for JAX-RS. Uh, we also support Spring Cloud function on top of FN. We have just announced the support uh, for the serverless frameworks. So we are really working a lot to make sure that FN provides a lot of compelling capabilities. So uh, wrap up. FN, it's a container native, cloud diagnostic, polyglot, open source, fast platform. Everything is open source. It's Apache V2. Uh, it's not a, an open core. So all the stuff that you see uh, in the FN GitHub organization is what we will use uh, for our managed services at some point in time. So there are not no any there, there, there's no hidden stuff that we just keep for us. Um, it's container native, so you see that we are using and leveraging the Docker ecosystem. Any Docker uh, image can be a function. The thing that we also do is that we are hiding that complexity for you. So you, as a developer, just focus on writing function. It's cloud diagnostic. At some point in time, Oracle will have a managed services of FN. But given that every, everything is open source, you can take it and run it on top of a different cloud provider, or you can run it on premises. And you see that we also have a, this very strong developer focus. So you can do everything using the FN CLI. You can bootstrap your function. You can test your function. You can run your function. You can deploy your function on a FN server, on a managed uh, platform. And you can also use FN to call your function. It's polyglot. Uh, Java is the first class citizen. Go is also uh, well supported. Technically, uh, FN is written in Go, but we are really spending a lot of time on the Java side of it. JavaScript is also very obvious. But if you are using other language, that's something that is perfectly uh, doable on top of FN. So if we look back at the goal that we set when we started to work on FN, clearly, FN is platform independent. There is, there is no vendor lock. Uh, in FN. The, uh, and also, if you look at the code that we produce, if you look at the Java class of any FN function, there's no FN interface that you need to implement, or no, I, I mean, it's a very clean uh, Java code. It's scalable independent, for sure. Obviously, we do like uh, Kubernetes a lot. So, for example, we are providing this Helm chart for Kubernetes, but you can run FN on a different uh, scheduler. It's not an issue. We are leveraging the Docker ecosystem. Again, we are providing all the abstraction to make sure that you don't have to understand how Docker works if you don't want to. Everything is open source. So you can take FN and help us contribute. And finally, FN is very approachable. Uh, all it takes to start FN on, a, on, on your machine is Docker. You install Docker, and you are up and running to uh, use FN. So, those are some resources, and before I leave you with those resources, I want to... 
Well, I will not say it. <laughs> and so, three things. Um, please check, check out FN. I mean, uh, it's really a nice project. It's very young, but uh, it's very promising. And last but not least, French fries and the French sprout. Thank you. So I think we have one or two minutes for questions. Is that correct? Yes. We have, I think, one minute. So is there any questions? Yes, sir. Can I ask you about comparing interactive APIs for functional composition like uh, RX Java and Reactor because they provide uh, similar capabilities composing functions and there are also possibilities to distribute these composed functions. But uh, you are using complete of a future which is, uh, uh, may I say, low level functional composition primitive. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, that's something that we're looking at. But right now, it's a bit early to, uh, to give any answers regarding that. For example, some of the things that we have uh, discussed, but clearly uh, there's no concrete plan to work on that. Um, so given that we have support for Kotlin, we can uh, start to have a look at uh, Kotlin coroutines, for example. It might be, it might be useful. But r so right now, I don't have any concrete answer regarding that. But the thing that you have to keep in mind is that FNflow is distributed. So, for example, uh, if one of the functions fail, fn flow, and I didn't show that in, in my example, will have the ability to retry the remote invocation transparently, those kind of things. So it's not just a matter of switching from uh, the flow API to another API. There are more complexity in that. Okay. Thank you. So, do we have any more questions? No? Well, anyway, I will be here... Um, till uh, the end of the day. So feel free to, to grab me if you have any questions or comments. So thank you.